Hey everybody, Shane from BD Diesel again, and today we're gonna to talk about LS manifolds, or more specifically, exhaust manifolds for your V8 2002 to 2013 Chevrolet Silverado or GMC Sierra. Now, being a Chevy boy, these are near and dear to my heart, specifically. But uh, one thing that always gets talked about often when you talk about manifolds, especially for small block powered pickup trucks, is shorty tube headers or long tube headers, right? Or factory style replacement manifolds. So what I got here in the back of the truck is a passenger side uh, manifold from BD and a passenger side sort of typical shorty header. Um, we're not gonna talk about long tube headers today because that is a bit of a different animal, uh, more of a sort of race use only or extreme performance sort of application. So in terms of factory exhaust, fitment, uh, direct stock drop-in, this is sort of what you have on the market right now. And I think there's a bit of a misnomer in the scene that a lot of people maybe think that like these shorty headers are not a lot. There, there's opinions are mixed, I should say, on the shorty header. Some guys automatically group it in with the performance of long tube headers because it's a header, which many people, if you uh, cruise around the internet enough and do a little bit of research, many people are correct and say that these are not better than just factory manifolds and in often cases sometimes worse. And we can get into that in a minute. But uh, just lay looking at them here on the bench, you can see a shorty header sort of gets a little bit like crunched up because there isn't a lot of space between the flange and the, uh, the outlet uh, versus with a cast manifold, you can you have more freedom to sort of flow the casting a bit smoother, if you will, than, than when you have to jam the pipes together. One of the things to consider when just comparing cast manifolds versus tube style headers, any of them per se, not just shorty, is construction style and reliability. Now, one of the main benefits of sticking with the cast manifold is because of the uniform thickness of the casting by nature, they heat and cool more uniformly than a tubular manifold that has thin wall tubing and thick flanges where you'll get different rates of heating and expansion and contraction, which many of you out there on the internet already know and are already yelling at the screen that these crack. Yes, and, and they do, especially at the welds. You get these, um, you know, heat affected zones near the welds, especially up in here in the flange where you have thick thing with a thin thing and you'll crack tube headers. It's the thing that happens. Now I don't wanna bash completely on headers because I do wanna maybe say like in a race application, like let's say you're making a little like drag truck or something like that or drag car, there's advantages to being able to make long tube, long tube headers or headers that flow properly for the motor and give you the best uh, efficiency, but uh, that's different. That's a different topic than this. We're talking about just direct drop in, bolt in, where I don't believe and feel, and uh, probably we can, we can show that this is not as good as just sticking with a cast manifold. So, number one, as we just said, reliability. A cast manifold is going to be more reliable, especially when it comes to the welded joints. Uh, this has joint and more joints and joints here and joint there and a joint down here where this doesn't have any joints and it's all fairly uniform in thickness is going to heat and contract fairly evenly. Um, the other thing to consider is with each one of these joints you sort of end up with a transition for the air that isn't necessarily as nice as if you were to flow it smoothly. So what we can do, what we've done here, the other thing I should say before we move on is, uh, excuse my tape job, I've taped them off because we're gonna hit the flow bench here in a second, is you can see when we cast something, we can actually cast the manifold port shape to better match the cylinder head uh, as best we can to have that transition to be as smooth as possible from the cylinder head into the manifold for the best flow, where often when you have tubular manifolds, you end up with just a big round hole. Now, that's great when you build a race car with a race motor and aftermarket cylinder heads and you have huge valves and huge exhaust runners. Um, but when we're just slapping this onto a stock cylinder head, which has more of like a small oval hole, um, then this big hole isn't actually super great for flow. Um, that big transition isn't as wonderful, so you can see there. But the rest of these ports look all the same underneath the tape. But. So without, for, without any other uh, details to sort of discuss, we can move over to the flow bench and show you what we're talking about in terms of performance. So long-winded recap aside, uh, the main benefits you're gonna get from sticking with the cast manifold is reliability with heating and cooling because of the uniform thicknesses and lack of joints, welded joints, and better port matching than uh, tubular style. 
Uh, that's probably the two big takeaways. And the third being full performance. In a case where a shorty header, you can actually be better with a cast manifold than you can with this crunched up tubing. And uh, let's go to the flow bench and take a look. So what I got here is our Superflow uh, 1020, great flow bench. Uh, we've been using it for all our exhaust manifold development uh, and all the great stuff that uh, you guys see on our website and flow numbers, it's all coming from here. Got a little full bench adapter here and on our bench, and we're gonna strap these manifolds on. Uh, for example, in this, we're gonna, we're gonna flow this longest runner here, uh, which should get you this, like, an idea of, of how these manifolds are flowing. Um, yeah, let's take a look. There we go. Okay. So what we saw there, we flow at uh, 25 inches of water, which is uh, pretty standard for flow bench stuff and uh, engine development and cylinder heads and intake manifold stuff. So we follow that sort of industry convention. So at 25 inches of water of depression, as you say, through the manifold system here, uh, we see about 170 CFM of airflow. Now let's throw on the uh, BD unit. All right. Do the old swap. Oh. The big cast iron boy is heavy. Of course, uh, in the vehicle, the BD manifold will be installed with longer fasteners and spacers on here too to help aid uh, the clamping and uh, to reduce the chances of breaking the fastener, which on these manifolds is sort of one of the common problems is to bust the fastener. I think a lot of you Chevy half-ton guys know about the fastener that's on near at the back of the motor near the near the uh, firewall by now. There we go. Again, we're looking at those two numbers. So we'll let it get up to 25 inches of water here. There we go. Where are we at? Oh, 201. Yeah, about 201 CFM, maybe a, maybe a tick over. All right, there we go. So now we can see how the BD manifold flows, uh, what is that, about 201? Well, that's like a 14.9% increase, uh, the BD manifold over the shorty tube header, which is pretty substantial. So if you were to put on a shorty header, you'd be, losing almost 15% in flow just on that one cylinder alone. Now uh, we'll run the rest of these ports and then we can, we can show across the whole thing what the differences are. But I think this illustrates and shows you right away the differences between this big opening and then all this bunched up inside here trying to get out the outlet compared to, uh, compared to something like a cast manifold that has a bit smoother runner so we can see in here how, how much smoother the transition happens down inside there and how the inlet here better matches the, the exhaust port. Well, there you have it. We spent a little bit of time on the full bench and we got some numbers comparing the two. And not only do we see that the cast iron manifold is gonna be better in reliability for heat cycling uh, and it's better matched to the ports of the cylinder head, it actually flows quite a bit better than the typical shorty tube header. Uh, as a matter of fact, nearly 15% better. You're gonna drop 15% of flow if you switch to something like a shorty tube header, which is substantial. Uh, and then we flowed the rest of the ports and we found that this port flowed 16% better than this one. Uh, this port flowed 14% better than this one. And these two ports actually flowed even, which sort of makes sense because I mean, this is just whoop straight out and this one just goes whoop straight out. So this port actually flows the best on this manifold 
but it is finally even with this one here. So on the whole, we're looking uh, uh, healthiest and running the best. It's gonna be probably a better bet to stick with something like a cast iron manifold versus a tubular shorty header. If you have any questions about this information or stuff, please reach out to us at bbdiesel.com. Uh, check out our uh, YouTube channel here or even our Facebook page.